Hi, welcome back to the Review Crew. I'm Sachi. And I'm Madeline. And today we will be reviewing the documentary Framing Britney Spears. Here's the trailer. What do we want? Free Britney! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? This is Free Britney 102, where we explore issues related to the Free Britney movement. The Free Britney movement is advocating for the end of Britney Spears' conservatorship. But a functioning woman that's been working nonstop, it just it doesn't make any sense. Dear Brittany, my name is Elizabeth Dunan, and I'm 29 years old. My name is James Miller, and I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My name is Jasmine, I'm 28, and I am a Scorpio from New Jersey. Dear Brittany. Dear Brittany. Dear Brittany. I'm so nervous, I'm like sweating. Your whole situation is consuming me now. I can't believe that it's just been this long, and I, I didn't know. When I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. But every day you learn more, and you gain more wisdom from that. Why is she still in this? Why is her dad making all of her decisions? I have always viewed the situation as something that I don't think would have ever happened to a man in America. Trust me, there are days that I have, I struggle with myself. I trust the system. I believe the law is aimed at actually protecting the conservative. There were things out there that have been said about me that aren't completely true. We stand up for you, Britney Spears, and we won't stop until you reach freedom. All right, so what are your initial thoughts? Yeah, so I don't know much about Britney Spears, but I think that this documentary was very eye-opening. I mean, it was a very like informative documentary about this pop star, especially in the 2000s when pop was this very upcoming genre. And she was one of the biggest female sort of symbols for pop. And she had such a big fan following. And the documentary really took me through her life in a very, very detailed manner, especially because it was surrounded by so much. It was surrounded by the media circus and it was very, um, yeah, eye opening. And like, I really liked it. What did you think? Well, I thought it was fascinating, and, like horrifying, because in my eyes, Britney Spears is like the quintessential like American pop star, very like cute girl next door, blonde from like a small southern town. And so it was really just heartbreaking to see the way that her career in life has taken off in the past few years. And also it's really interesting because I kind of grew up listening to her music and during the whole time when the media was sort of attacking her and being able to look at that now from a different lens like as an adult is really sort of eye-opening and scary how that has all happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I think um, because I'm studying feminism in one of my classes, I think that like from a feminist point of view, like it was very, very messy in terms of all the sort of backlash she got for, um, I don't know, like expressing herself like sexually and like having kids right after and having a bad marriage and like all of these things. Like I think they culminated into her wanting to just just you know hide from the media and even that was controversial so it was very interesting to see the implications of a pop style like that and how she sort of navigated her way through the industry um and obviously the fact the exterior factors that kind of came into it and i feel like the documentary also did a good job with the um with the archival footage and the interviews and the switching, I think that that really helped um, get a clear view on what happened. And obviously, as a viewer, I did empathize a lot with Britney, even though I really don't know much about her. Yeah, and I think that this was also like around her peak time was when like reality TV and sort of like stars start stopped becoming celebrities in a certain way and started becoming like actual people and being super involved like in their whole personal life which is really you know tough to watch mm -hmm. in a way and also just how American culture as a whole really consumes celebrity and not just like in her work but also like in her whole life it just really took over in the way that the paparazzi did not respect at all like her wishes for privacy and they were involved like in her marriage and wanted to figure out her custody battle and things like that. In terms of like conservatorship, like I think that even that was a very interesting take because even 
um, her assistant, her previous assistant kind of described it to be very ambiguous. And I feel like her journey in the industry also led to, a lot of people had a lot of like objectives uh, concerned with her money. And I think that's also how things started going downhill, especially when she got back up, when she, start, when she started recovering from um, everything she had been through, when she started doing shows, she was with James Corden, like all of that. And I think that's where sort of people tried to really, really get into her life and do her wrong. And even that was a big like arc in the story, which I didn't expect. And it still is to this day ambiguous. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, even that was very, very shocking. Yeah, and I just really wonder after watching that, especially now, who has her best interest at heart? Because mm -hmm. it sounds to me that like some of her family members might not be doing that, especially how um, her, Brittany's like former assistant was saying that he wasn't really involved in her life until the conservatorship. Mm -hmm. And there's an interview at the end like with her brother and he just kind of like brushes it off. And we also, I wanted to hear from Jamie Lynn mm -hmm. Spears yeah. um, about her whole opinion on it. And it's just, you really have to wonder, especially because she has been basically working since she was like five or six or seven, she's just been going on and on with her career. So it just, to me, feels exploitative to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that like, I mean, the agenda of again, the media circus, it's just very scary, I think. And I think she is a celebrity and a pop star that really, really got into the depths of it, where it actually resulted in negative, in a negative impact on her and I feel like she was the first one to actually go through that fame and that I mean just that popularity to the point that it started negatively impacting her and what was interesting was that throughout the documentary we see people not necessarily understanding where she was coming from when she was going through that bad place in her life and there was no remorse or empathy for anything that anyone had done to her it was just they kind of assume their role as someone who who she benefited from and I think that was also extremely skewed especially the paparazzi and a lot of people that were involved with her like I just felt like no one really understood where she was coming from and maybe this is a generational thing I think now people are far more empathetic but I feel like at that time like and how it's portrayed in the documentary like no one really understood what was happening and she was just like this spectacle that was like been made fun of yeah yeah i also think that this has sort of been a trend to sort of like at attach on to female pop stars and just female celebrities in general like i think we've seen that with whitney houston when she was struggling with substance abuse and also amy winehouse is one mm -hmm. that really sticks out to me and i just hope that you know, Brittany's still alive, which is really important. So I hope that if she ever wants to speak about it, she has the space to do so. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think that mental health hasn't really entered the national conversation yeah. until recently. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we still have the ability to reconcile with Britney Spears mm -hmm. and that she will have a space to continue her career if she wants to and just speak out against all the terrible things that mm -hmm. have happened to her. Yeah, exactly. And I think the documentary proves as how powerful of a symbol she is. We watched a whole documentary about her without even her appearing once. So that just like kind of shows her power as a celebrity. And yeah, I completely agree with you. I hope that happens. We'll be back for more discussion about the Britney Spears documentary after this break. So I also wanted to talk about Justin Timberlake because their relationship mm -hmm. was talked about in depth in the documentary. 
which I thought was, it was really interesting to be able to look back on it now because that's one of the iconic couples that mm -hmm. we've seen in our lifetime. And I remember this, they show a little bit of his music video. I think the song is called like, As Long As You Love Me. Mm -hmm. And it's very heavily like hinted to be about Britney Spears. And I watched that video after watching the documentary and it's so obvious the way that he's trying to portray this this sort of like narrative that she cheated on him, like did him like super dirty. And it's just like very weak link behavior, especially if you're like the most popular couple at the time to sort of put that out there, mm -hmm. especially against women who are constantly like seen as, you know, the bad person or like the cause of a certain breakup. And that was just, I think, really irresponsible. And the way he talked about their like, sexual history mm -hmm. was just truly unacceptable like especially looking at all of the things Justin Timberlake has said and done in the yeah. past few years mm -hmm. and the fact he like put out this I don't know this mediocre little like notes app mm -hmm. apology all these years later like mm -hmm. I just really hope there's a day of reckoning for him mm -hmm. because that is just so unacceptable for him to be acting like that like he's an adult mm -hmm. and that was just totally inappropriate yeah and I'm sure there's so much more to uh -huh. the story. Yeah, he completely like victimized himself in a situation where he didn't even have the right to be a victim. Like a relationship does have two people in it, specifically this one. But I think that what's also interesting is that after this happened and after she went through her little like breakdown episode and like where she was just not mentally okay, she was actually like the victim of circumstance, not necessarily some someone or something, but like she was just not doing well and she got back like backlash for that as well, which is like it's like the flip side of a situation, but she's not she's not favored in either of them. So I think that again, like she was just like put through such a hard time for no reason. And I think this was also when sort of um I don't know, people were like assuming things. There was this mom that stated that she would like shoot Britney Spears if she had the chance to. And Britney clearly said like, it's not my job to babysit your daughter if your daughter is being negatively affected by what I'm portraying. And that also talks about the individuality of pop stars and how they have, how they do have other lives separate from what they show other people. Um, what did you think about her Instagram and the podcast, the Instagram Oh podcast? my gosh. I've never actually listened to the podcast, but I know mm -hmm. it's had like a massive impact. Like I remember over the summer and just like in the past few months, how much I've seen about Free Britney. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like within the past like six months or a year really has taken traction. And her Instagram is fascinating. Like and it's all the comments are like, oh, wear this next time or say this next time if you need help. It's just strange. Mm -hmm. The whole like aura of her Instagram. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Like she'll do her like little dances and stuff or like uh -huh. her captions are just, something just doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, it's like she's living behind this facade and also she's not very like done up. Like she looks like she's not in a very good condition of sorts. Like I think there's, yeah, there's definitely something wrong in the hidden, the hidden messages again in the captions was also something that I noticed. What I also find fascinating is now how like, I don't know, like our generation has, has sort of like developed this ability to find hidden meanings behind social media posts. And I compare this to like the, the, the early 2000s where she was getting her backlash and to now and how people are genuinely trying to reach out to her. And I just find it amazing how there's this flip again in terms of how many people are actually looking out for Britney and want her to be okay versus in the in the 2000s where like I don't picture this happening in the, in the 2000s where people like overanalyzing things just to make sure she's okay which only proves how much of an effect she has created on her audiences um yeah what do you think I think that's definitely true she's been a huge advocate for like the gay community mm -hmm. and I think as really help people accept herself and you can kind of see in the documentary how well respected she is and in love and that she truly is like a nice person mm -hmm. and then also just about her Instagram like it seems like someone like some people have said like it seems like someone's like holding her captive like there's mm -hmm. always like the angle is just like up here yeah and like it's just 
I don't know. It's it's just sketchy. And yeah, I'm glad that people are starting to sort of reach out to her in a way that like, you know, like she maybe she isn't in charge of her social media. That's like also mm -hmm. um, a theory. But whoever is or if it's her are able to see these comments and like know that people are watching and they care and want like mm -hmm. her to have the best sort of quality of life. Yeah, in the documentary, I also noticed how like the whole aspect of conservatorship came in. And initially, I thought that it was good that her dad was involved because he kind of pulled her back up, which is what I assumed. And it kind of showed that, you know, she was back on track, like he was taking, he was like taking care of her and like he was um, responsible for a lot of her finances and her like, um, like just like her life in general. And I think that um, a lot of people did say that she did benefit from that initially, but then as she started becoming, like, g gaining a lot of recognition again and re sort of constructing her own image, I think that's where things got a little messy and the conservatorship started becoming a problem. What do you think about it? Well, I think I remember some people who were close to Britney like at the beginning of her career when she started to gain a lot of fame said that he wasn't really super involved at all mm -hmm. in his life and it seemed almost as though like he wanted her to achieve this level of stardom for his own personal gain and like he said something like oh my daughter's gonna be so rich she'll be able to buy me a boat i remember her, one of the first of her lawyers like on the legal counsel said that she explicitly told him that she didn't want her father to be the conservator, mm -hmm. especially with her finances and her estate. So it seems very, very sketchy. It doesn't seem like she ha he has her best interests at, in heart mm -hmm. at all. And I just wonder like, what role her family plays in how this has turned out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it just doesn't doesn't seem like a good thing really and I remember also that her ex-husband Kevin Federline mm -hmm. filed a restraining order against him because he got into a physical altercation with one of her sons oh, okay okay yeah even there was also the mention of that lawyer that was very suspicious in the middle uh, because he sort of reinstated this um, sort of claim or term in terms of law that she didn't agree with. And then again, that's where the decline sort of started taking place again. But yeah, I think it is still very like open-ended and we really don't know how that conservatorship like affect, like we just don't know about it. Like I think that like, of course it is under the wraps, but like I just hope she's okay. Yeah, free Britney, free for Britney, sure. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem like it, it just, she, she's gone on world tours. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just seems that she should have more of a say in her life decisions. Yeah. And I think as a fan, looking back on her music now, the songs like Lucky or Peace of Me, when she explicitly says to the media that, they want a piece of her and there are things that she has done like shave her head so that they would not be as involved in her life and still people have just not respected her at all and it's really damning to look at that now and realize that people have just not respected her wishes and have viewed her as sort of like a commodity. Mm -hmm. Yeah that also ties into how she stated that she just wants to be free and left alone and she doesn't want anyone to bother her. And again, I hope like, you know, she gets what she needs in the end and she really deserves it, honestly. As, as, as I'm not a fan myself, I can really empathize with her as a person. And yeah, that was our discussion on the documentary Framing Britney Spears. We'll be right back after this. That's all for this week. If you want to follow more Review Crew content, go to the Review Crew Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok, as well as Orange TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Find the Review Cues podcast on our Spotify or on our website at orangetvnetwork.syr.edu, where you can also find our blog and more OTN information. Check out this week's virtual screening hosted by University Union. Bill and Ted face the music. See you next week. <laughs>